again, if it happens that there's any technical problem, I will just be patient. I will be back in a while. Sometimes I get disconnected, you know, out of my hand. Um, sometimes the connection is too slow. Sometimes you can't hear me just because of, uh, you know, of, uh, but today I think I stopped all microphones and I muted all microphones. We, we, I learned from the first session, of course, <clears throat> first sessions with other students. And uh, I don't think you can hear any noise or any echoes coming from anywhere because all microphones have been muted. And even if you want to unmute your microphone, you just cannot do that, which is really good. So I was just checking about, um, <clears throat> I was checking about new features and options to find here and for the service and for the favor of every student who is responsible and he or she wants to learn. Good. So, um, as I said, my only problem today is that I need to admit late comers because you have, I have to admit them. If I don't admit them, that they can't join in. But we're going to start this the way uh, we have it now. And probably if they don't have the chance to attend, the recording will be chopped again or split uh, into chunks and then it might be uploaded on the YouTube channel of the faculty. Right, so uh, I hope everybody's good. I hope everybody's safe and well uh, in your homes. I hope that you're having a great time at these hard times. And I hope that you're having you know, some fun as well at these hard times. So um, I'm sorry, it's been a long time. I'm trying to really edit and uh, refine my presentations and my uh, courses before I upload them to the platform. I mean, just the PPTs, okay? So that's why it took me a long time to get back to you, but uh, you know. So um, uh, this is the last course in terms of Heart of Darkness, Conrad's novel, of course, okay? And uh, if uh, you don't, if somebody can't hear me, okay, it's just because of your uh, speakers or your computers. It's not mine. I think everybody can hear me actually, okay? Great. So, um, as I said, this will be the last session in terms of this novel. Conrad's novel, The Heart of Darkness. And then we'll be moving uh, to seasonal migration to the north, uh, Tayyip Saleh's novel. And I hope, I think it's hard time, high time you read that. And uh, it's, if you haven't yet, please just do read the novel because we're gonna dig into it again and find, talk about different issues in the novel. And we'll also be trying or we try to connect the two novels together and see points of similarities and points of difference between uh, the uh, Conrad's novel and Saleh's novel, okay? So uh, what do I have today here? Uh, very simply, I have, uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, a few things, the civilizing mission in the novel. And uh, the issue of violence and racial hatred uh, in the novel as well as part of uh, the colonizer's uh, strategy to pacify and uh, subdue the natives, native people. So uh, as you can see here, we're going to first slide and well, a couple uh, of slides will be about um, theorizations again, which means we're going to be able to understand the theory a little bit of theory that uh, deals with civilizing mission and what some people talk about in terms of civilizing mission and then try to find those uh, issues that have been theorized into the novel or when we dig into the novel where can we find the voices that we have been uh, using to analyze our novels okay so what we're doing actually here as you always know uh, I, mean, I always told you that you need to understand a little bit about theory and then go to the novel and in the light of what you understand or what you have read, you can just uh, analyze the novel. Okay, so we're also doing a pedagogical 
service uh, uh, here that is we try to link between theory and analysis and this will be of course uh, pertinent for you in terms of your research project because you need to uh, there are a lot of students who analyze novels and they will be able to should be able to find that link between theory and analysis okay so let me just go to the first slide which is about a very important citation by Edward Said in his culture and imperialism okay and we're gonna dig into this quote and find find out the main arguments or uh, uh, I mean what is significant in this uh, uh, citation here this quote here so we're gonna have to uh, analyze the quote and then try to link the quote to the novel later okay so as you can see here Edward said in culture and imperialism states I see as part of the general European efforts to be ruled uh, to rule distant lands and peoples and therefore as related to orientalist depictions of the Islamic world as well as to Europe's special ways of representing the Caribbean islands Ireland and the Far East what are now start from here this is what is more important what are striking in these discourses are rhetorical figures one keeps encountering in the descriptions of the mysterious East, as well as the stereotypes about the African, or when it talks about the African, of course, there are other minorities like Indian, Irish, Jamaican, Chinese mind, African mind, general. So the notions about bringing civilization to primitive or barbaric peoples, the disturbingly familiar ideas about flogging, or death or extended punishment being required when they misbehaved or became rebellious because they mainly understood force or violence best. They were not like us and for that reason deserve to be ruled. So if you just take a few seconds to ponder the quote, the what say it's quote, uh, again, what are the key words that we're going to highlight here to uh, decompose the quote and see what, what, what kind of theorization he's uh, using here or he's bringing up here uh, in this quote. Okay, so there are a lot of issues that are very important. Okay, so I'm not going to waste time and just did the job for you and you can just check here that the colonial discourse is premised on three main points okay that's what is very important in uh, say each citation here colonial discourse is premised on three main points this rhetorical figures in colonial descriptions okay and these rhetorical figures of course uh, are 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 uh, associated to mystery the mysterious other the stereotypes of the African mind, okay? The notions about bringing civilization to primitive or barbaric people, and the disturbingly familiar ideas about flogging, death, or extended punishment. In other words, Said wants to tell us that whenever we read texts about colonial discourse or colonialism, okay? we are very much uh, encountered with these ideas and these issues here, okay? Whatever you encounter, reading, for example, Conrad's novel or the season of migration to the north that we have to study, of course, that there are these figures, okay? Uh, these colonial descriptions about mysterious other. We talked about mystery, right? We talked about the stereotypes of the African mind. And we're going to talk more about this later in the next slide, okay? And you encounter, again, notions about bringing civilization to primitive or barbaric people, okay? So we're going to check or we're going to probably find out in which or uh, passages, a few passages that talk or this idea where, in which this idea or notions about bringing civilization to primitive barbaric people is iterated many times, 
Okay, uh, just excuse me, I have to always to go back to participants to admit it's so it's a hard job to do actually. That's why next time you should be you shouldn't be late. Okay, uh, so you encounter these notions about bring in civilization. We're going to check, of course, a few passages in which we have uh, words and terms and passages and, cite and, uh, and uh, phrases and sent statements that are related to this notion here. And then disturbingly familiar ideas about flogging, death, or extended punishment. So whenever we read a text uh, about, and this is what it was said it wants to convey here again, is that reading these texts, these books about colonial encroachments, you encounter and uh, the, the, the other notions, and these notions are very disturbing, of course, and they are familiar, okay? About what? About flogging. Flogging is beating, beating people to, to death, all right? Uh, uh, as, as a way of punishment. Death, so we have massacres, we have atrocities, we have uh, genocides, and extended punishments. So whenever we read, of course, those texts, we encounter such uh, ideas and such notions, and we are very familiar with them, okay? So what happens, uh, again, so practically two significant factors led the empire or the empires to colonize the East, okay? So according to the court of Edward VIII, uh, another message to, to be conveyed in that citation is, it is that two very significant factors have led the empires to colonize the East or the Orient in general, okay? Mysterious Orient or East, and this mystery again, as you, of course you remember, that is, uh, can be seen in darkness, in the impenetrability, in the incompre incomprehensibility of the Orient. And when we say the Orient here, including Africa, China, Asia, Australia, even Australia, uh, the Caribbean, West Indies, and so on and so forth, okay? That's one whole entity, which, which is against, or which comes in a body in opposition uh, against the white of the Western world, which is incarnated in uh, Western Europe and the United States of America, okay? So what Edward said was to convey here is this, uh, uh, this these two, uh, uh, excuse me, Amira. So um, I was talking about two very significant factors led the empires to colonize the East, okay? Can you see my screen? I just, uh, I wanted to make sure. Can you see my screen? Can you just drop a yes in your chest? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Shema. Good, so uh, what happens is that this mystery or this discourse of mystery, okay? So what we're doing here, uh, maybe I forgot to tell you that, well, I, I said the title is about, our presentation is about the civilizing mission and violence. So one of the objectives is why, how does the white man uh, justify the civilizing mission, okay? And where does it occur in the novel? Okay, and Edward Say talks about one way to do that is rendering or turning the other world, the other space into a mystery. And this gives a pretext and justification for the white man or colonizer to come up or come over and colonize the, uh, 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 the enlightened, of course, the, the dark uh, world, okay? And when you talk about mystery, part or portions of the discourse are related to darkness, the in, impenetrable world and incomprehensible world. And another thing is that this, what I call here, Western mindset of Eastern mind. And I hope you got it, all right? So whenever we talk about the mindset means a number of stereotypes and attitudes and conceptions of the West or Western man vis-a-vis -vis or of about the Eastern mind. So for Western men or Western mindset in general, the Eastern mind, Oriental mind, the African mind, Chinese mind is just timeless. It cannot move, it cannot be developed, okay? So that's one way or one justification for us to come over 
and try to enlighten this mind, African mind here. So this is part of discourse that is reiterated in those texts and you can encounter those notions, okay? So this is what we mean very simply by two factors that led to colonial uh, encroachments in Africa or uh, in India or whatever, okay? I have to admit somebody else again. So uh, when we talk about uh, the mindset the European mindset, of course, we shouldn't forget about the Eurocentrism, and this is an idea or an issue that has been very much related to uh, this binary opposition between the white man and the dark man, or the black man, or the West and the East in general, because when you say Eurocentrism means that for, for Europeans, for white men in general, Europe is the center of the world. So whoever, whatever is around uh, this center is just at the margin, at the periphery. And that's another binary uh, 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 polarization between the center and the periphery, okay? So uh, now I want you to focus on this last idea uh, in, in Saeed's uh, uh, quote here and uh, where, where, where he says the disturbingly familiar ideas about flogging, death or extended punishment being required uh, uh, when they misbehaved or being rebellious because they mainly understood force and violence best. So uh, why, 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 why is this very significant in our respect here? Because very simply, it relates or it pertains to violence, the idea of violence, okay? So whenever you read a text about colonial discourse, as we have done with uh, Conrad's novel, there were so many passages that were disturbingly, we are familiar, I mean, with disturbing passages that talk about beating with sticks, death, even death atrocities that happen, or extended punishment. Uh, of course, being required when they misbehaved. So for the white man, the only reinforcement, we call it reinforcement or the reaction that we need to give right away is flogging is beating or just killing or extended punishment. And punishment, extended punishment, which come up with uh, uh, death by in the end of the day, okay? So these strategies or punishment uh, uh, strategies are very important and they are required when, when the natives uh, misbehave or they are rebellious. So for the white man, he shouldn't, or they shouldn't see, the colonizer shouldn't see any symptoms of rebellion from the, uh, on the part of the native. That's very, uh, 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 I mean, very familiar for us in, to us in, in, in colonial discourse and in the novel as well. And uh, I'll stop here to remind you of the lieutenant Montagnac says, whenever some thoughts besiege me, so just the thoughts, which means that uh, whenever I see symptoms of rebellion coming from the natives, what do I do? I have some heads cut off. I have some heads cut off. Not the heads of artichokes, but the heads of men. So even death. So uh, there should be no reaction. There should be no resistance from the side of the colonized uh, person. Okay. So let me admit a few people again. Okay. Admit all. Great. So, uh, whenever the natives misbehave or show some rebellion, they get punishment, flogging, and death. Because they mainly understood force and violence best. This is very important, very significant in say, his terms, that force and violence is very much related to the native man. They mainly understood force and violence, which means that uh, for the colonizer, the colonized is very familiar with violence and force because that, that's the source of violence. The East and the Orient has always been a source of violence and disorder 
and chaos, which means that the natives or a black man or uh, I mean uh, the inhabitants are very much familiar. They understand force and violence. So it's not something which is weird, which is peculiar. So if even if we punish them, even if we uh, uh, beat them to that, that's very normal. So violence is being normalized here and justified by the white man, by the colonizer. Okay, and I, 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 in this scheme here, I want you to look at this: the colonizer and colonized. There is a relationship of violence and trauma, which is very important here. Okay, trauma, of course, means psychological disorders that come after that violence. If ever the inhabitants remain uh, uh, alive. Okay.